You can feel the heat getting hotter, like inside of our gear. When we know it's a high temperature, um, that, that gear, it gets hot inside. And you could feel it getting hotter and hotter and hotter and, uh, as we were searching. Um, in fact, yeah. you guys had a conversation about that. We did later on. I mean, I, didn't you say something in the room? Like, do you hear that? Or? Initially, well, that was uh, when we had first gone in uh, to search. Again, pretty typical search. It was. It was. Um, I, I was out in front of Scott, so I had my left shoulder on the wall. As soon as we came in the door, started a left-hand search. Came right along the wall. Scott was out to my right, and he had a hold of me on on, you know, say my right boot, my my right leg, and he was sweeping to his right, and we were moving really quick through the room. It was a. Typical search, conditions were, were not favorable, they were, they were poor, um, but uh, we had a good assessment from the back apartments. We kind of knew where we were going. We knew that the rooms were tight. We knew they were cluttered. They had, they had a lot of furniture in them. Uh, we knew the rooms were small, <clears throat> but we were moving quick. Um, we, we actually uh, made it around the room um, in less than three minutes. We were, we were through the room, and um, it wasn't until we got back around all the way around the room that we started down a hallway that was very tight, um, shoulder to shoulder, like the walls were right up against my shoulders. We started down the hallway and that's where it became evident that the heat was, uh, was getting untenable to the point where if there was a victim in there, they, it was not survivable. They would not be alive in those conditions. And based on the, the tight space and the increased heat, I decided we needed to turn around and we needed to get out of there. What was happening to your masks and the floor? What were some of those telltale signs that you knew you had a problem? Um, initially, I don't think we really thought we had a problem. We knew that conditions were deteriorating quick. Um, there was no discussion at this point between uh, the two of us. I think that that's where really the, the training is important. I don't. I think when conditions get like that inside of the building, we don't need to talk about it. We kind of have an idea that, hey, you know, something's, something's not right or something is getting worse or this is getting, this is getting worse uh, very quickly. Um, but it really, I don't want to say it's normal, but for us it's, okay, we need, to, we need to get out of here. We need to turn around. We need to get out. We don't need to search. We need a hose line. We don't need to search anymore for viable victims that may be in there, and we kind of need to get ourselves out of the situation. Um, but at that point, it, it, there wasn't a lot of communication. There was just, you know, hey, we're going to turn around, okay, and we turn around and we start out. And what point did you call Mayday? Well, um, as, as we turned around, um, I started to try to find a wall and started to walk our way back around to try to make it to the door. I knew we came in and we hit a couple walls, and then where Justin got into that hallway where it was very tight, he went in front of me a little bit to search. Um, at that point, he said, you know, um, I believe I'm in a hallway. We've got to turn around. We've got to go back out. You're disoriented so, at this point. Um, not necessarily at this point. Um, we turned around, and as we started making our way back out, that's where um, we, I, I know I became disoriented. I was the lead guy at that point, and I was following Justin on the way in. So now I turned around and tried to find a wall. But when I got turned around, I couldn't find the wall. Um, I started crawling away, um, crawling, and Justin was behind me. We were talking the whole time. And then that's where I thought we had the way out, and it was actually, it wasn't. And that's where I said, I don't know where we are. We're, we're lost. We're disoriented. Um, and we started trying to f figure out where we were in the room. It's kind of the speed of it all. So, I mean, uh, typically um, it, when we're searching a room, if I, if I lead in, I'm going to lead out. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of the kind of the rapid change in conditions and, and kind of where we were in relation to a, a, a kind of a tight spot, as we turned around, Scott was out in front of me. Um, and really quick, we kind of made our way back out to where we thought we were heading out, and we were just short of that door, as it turns out. And as soon as we hit where we thought we should be going out and we weren't going out, uh, we kind of immediately were like, you know, where are we? Well, why can't? Why isn't the door here? Why can't we get out the door? Um, you know, I, I think that it's very possible that based on the uh, the increasing heat, the amount of heat we had at this point, um, probably a couple other factors aided in that disorientation. Like it was at that point that you know uh, things got very quiet, pressures changed. You could feel the pressure, you know, kind of in your ears. Um, and everything got muffled. Communication 
although it was good between the two of us, came a little bit more difficult. We were yelling a little bit louder. Um, and we just, at that point, um, it happened very quickly. We realized we're, we can't get out here and we don't know why we can't get out. Like we should be able to go right out right here. And as soon as we couldn't, it, we were just disoriented. So um, Scott stayed kind of in that spot where we thought we were going out. There was a large couch that was there that I had oriented myself to when I came into the room and it was there and I kept thinking like, this is the couch, I, we came in right here, why can't we go out? And I was thinking that either a door closed, furniture fell, something changed our egress point there and we just couldn't figure out how to get by it. Um, I searched along the couch, got to the other end, hooked my foot on the couch, swept over in that direction, couldn't find anything. And as I came back to Scott, I realized that we were in some trouble. And um, you know, from training, we talk about this all the time, if you're in trouble, we don't wait to call Maydays. We call Maydays right away, let everyone know, hey, we're inside, we're in trouble, we need some help. Um, and you know, I knew the other half of our crew was right outside that door. And I'm thinking, if they hear it, they're gonna know, hey, they're right here. We can come in that door. We can, you know, get whatever's in the way out of the way. We can get some water in the room, cool it off. You know, I'm thinking they're they're right there. They're gonna hear this mayday. And um, I I broadcasted the, the uh, mayday, and there was no answer. But you know, people have asked me, you know, were you surprised when no one answered? It was happening so fast, and there was so many things going through my mind that I didn't even think about nobody, you know, that there, there was no answer to the, to the call. And, you know, Scott and I just kept moving. We just kind of kept feeling around and um, nobody answered the mayday. Uh, and we just, we, we searched back along the wall that we came from. Uh, at one point, Scott said, I, I think this is it. I think I have it. Um, you know, there was a sense of relief. You know, I'd like to say to everybody that I wasn't panicked, but I, I don't know about Scott, but I was, I was, pa I was panicking. Um, you know, we, again, all part of that training. We, we were calm. We were, we were acting appropriately. We were doing the things that we needed to do. But inside, I was like, I, I can't believe this is happening. You know, I can't believe that we're, we don't know how to get out. This was really, in my mind, going into that room. This is like a nothing search. We've done it a hundred times. Like it's, it's just a standard. This is kind of what we do, and to be lost and disoriented like that to me was, I just I couldn't believe it was happening. Um, we we searched around. We came into a doorway that Scott had found and said, "I think this is it." I was like, "Okay, great." It was a sense of relief. We crawled into it and realized that we were just in a small kitchen or bathroom. Yeah, I thought it was a bathroom because immediately, and like Justin said, you know, it was. I was nervous, and then once I found that doorway, I said, okay, here it is, because as he was searching the couch, I was on that wall, and I found the hutch, and I kept like being like, I, I swear the door is right here, and I kept feeling and feeling, and I was getting frustrated, because I'm like, it, we should be right there, we should be coming out. I felt the way we, come, you know, we came in, came out, and you know, it was tough to feel the walls, because he was on the walls, but we didn't make many turns, so I felt like we were right there. And then when I turned around and I found that door, you know, sigh of relief. Okay, we found our way out. Let's get out of here. And then I, I said, I, I started to go through and I felt the floor and I felt like a sink. And I was like, no, Justin, this is a bathroom. Um, now we know it was a kitchen. But, you know, at that point, that's where I got nervous too. When because, Scott said that, yeah. that's when I knew we were in real trouble. I knew that the conditions, we were, we were almost on our stomachs at this point. The heat had gotten hot enough that you couldn't get up like on your knees. Um, that, that the heat had really taken over the room and I knew we were at that point in pre-flashover conditions. Um, flashovers are unsurvivable. We, we know we're not gonna survive that. I knew we were, we were pre-flashover. Yeah. Um, that fire, I mean, you know, hearing in the walls, it sounded like a freight train coming up that, that wall and you could hear how it was just getting intense, more intense, more intense. And, you know, like Justin said, the heat, it was getting hot in there. You know, we, we knew we had to get out and I think at that time we moved out of the we moved out of the space that we were in into that that kitchen, um, and I was right at the doorway. So I was actually kneeling or kind of laying on the carpet inside the living room, and I, I called the second mayday, um, and with a little bit more, you know, I, I felt like the first mayday I gave, I tried to kind of take a big deep breath. I kind of okay, we're, you know, this is going to happen. We're going to do this, and it's okay. We're going to be okay. And, 
That second mayday, I was a little bit more anxious. I was a little bit more like, we need to get out of here right now, and I hope somebody hears this, and I hope, you know. Um, Did anyone hear it? I, we didn't get an answer, but again, I, 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 honestly, at the time, I wasn't even thinking that, that hey, why is no one answering this mayday? You know, I, we were kind of, I, I remember kind of the way I was laying on the floor when I keyed up my mic and called the mayday. I, I put my right hand back down again to kind of brace myself like as I kind of ducked down and when I did I put my hand on the linoleum in the uh, kitchen that we had just come out of and the floor was melting at that point. We had just been on the floor. The floor was off gassing, it was melting. Uh, my glove kind of slipped and stuck to it. I and that's that a sign it. of what? That is a sign that, that, that the, at the floor temperature is warm enough that it's melting the, um, the, the floor inside the, the kitchen. I knew we had seconds that this this was going to be you know that this room was going to be involved in fire and uh and you were afraid of the flashover at that point correct yeah um you know i um my mask the the smoke was something i've, I've never seen before i mean I, i've never seen i mean it felt like if you took your hands you could almost make like a snowball out of it it was so thick um and and i i felt it almost felt like we were wet like it was wet and thick and um and uh, it actually adhered to my mask, like the, the smoke that was in there, it actually stuck to it to the point when we had gotten out of the building. I've never seen my mask like that before. It just, it had this like black, um, it was like a soot. It, it was almost like it was burnt that I had to scrape off the front of my mask. I've never, I've never seen anything like that in a fire before. It was, it, it was, the smoke was unbelievable. Um, and, uh, I, at that point, was like, okay, I remember from the size up of the building that there was windows, you know, every two feet, every three feet, there was a window. And I got up as high as I could and kind of started crawling along the floor and t was taking my left hand and banging on the wall. And I eventually got to a point where I could feel that the, the wall had changed. It felt like glass. I, um, I had a hook with me, I had a, a, a rake, I had a plaster hook with me, and I took the hook and, and swung it a few times, cleaned out the glass, I smashed the window out. Um, Scotty was right behind me, um, you know, and uh, I was like, let's go for it. I grabbed him, I pulled him up to the window and, uh, and I, jumped. That was probably one of the most, um, you know, we were ner when he made the second midday call, that was when I was getting nervous. And um, to hear him go, um, to hit the wall twice, and then to hear him hit that window was a sigh of relief because we knew we found our exit. And, but like he said, the smoke was so thick, I couldn't even see where he was. And I could hear him, we were, in, we were talking. And he said to me, he goes, I found the window. And I said, well, where are you? And he grabbed me by my jacket and pushed me up towards the window. And um, that's when I got up to the window and I was about to jump out and a flame shot across in front of my face. And I actually stopped myself and, um, you know, he was, he was like, we gotta, we gotta go, we gotta go. And I just, I jumped head first. Um, I think I took some of the window with me.